Hey everybody, it is still Sunday, still daylight savings time, and still the last day of the bundle. And I have two more times to say that. Yay, Yay. bundle. So <laughs> Maybe if, three. Oh God. Um, <laughs> I, I'm feeling a little of the bundle tiredness right now. <laughs> um, if, you're, if you're watching this and you actually don't know what the 2024 vegan bundle is, it is $8,000 worth of digital products for $49 and it ends forever tonight at 11.59 Pacific Standard Time. Uh, you have a year to download everything. You all, <laughs> and Max is realizing when we're on camera yes. now, so he's going to be begging hard. Just ignore that. <laughs> he just got a treat for real. He like ate it seconds that fast. ago. Um, and if you have, okay, so you have classes, and with classes you'll download a PDF. You click a link, and then you sign up for it. So, for instance, I have an ebook, and I have six classes. You only have to sign up twice. I've got one class you sign up for and a, bun a mini bundle in the bundle of classes that you sign up for. Once you download these to your computer or your Google Drive or your thumb drive, they're yours forever. And once you sign up for a class, it's you get that class as long as that person has the class available. Mm -hmm. So it's you don't have to do all the things right now. You don't have to read all the books or take all the courses right now. You can take it as you will. And we're here with Nicole Fogelman. And so I would love it if you would introduce yourself to my audience. Hi, I'm Nicole, I'm Nicole Fogelman. And um, I'm really excited to be here with you guys today. Um, I've enjoyed this week of bundles. It's been really fun. This is my first year in the bundle. And it's been very exciting. I had to take a little bit of a break <laughs> during the week <laughs> to work full time. And, um, but I'm back on this weekend and excited about today. But um, I live in Richmond, Virginia. I um, am a nurse anesthetist by trade. So my specialty is pain. I, I deal with acute pain, obviously, in the operating room. And then I work specifically with people that have chronic pain help and specifically with the whole foods plant um whole foods plant based diet and working with patients to help heal their bodies of chronic pain so um that's yeah, go awesome ahead. so one thing i was going to ask is maybe can you explain a little bit about chronic pain versus just like regular old pain and then maybe how you came to do whole food plant-based with it sure yes so Chronic pain is actually defined as like pain that's longer than three months and pain that doesn't seem to go away. Like you've had surgery, obviously you're going to have acute pain and then the pain continues to persist. And then there's also obviously the, a lot of different diagnoses of chronic pain can be osteoarthritis, um, can be like fibromyalgia, chronic back pain. I mean, the list goes on and on that it's been a forefront of attention for people um, within, you know, our, especially our nation and all over the world because of the opioid um, epidemic. Mm -hmm. So people have, um, it's, you know, have, it's been more important in the news and the media's eye because, you know, people that have been chronically taking opioids and specifically chronic pain patients, and now what are they to do? So, I believe in the option of food as, as medicine and that a whole food plant-based diet can help kind of tame the pain, help even heal the pain. And I talk a lot about that. Um, I do um, plant-based nutrition support group um, once a month. And so there I, have, I try and help guide patients into kind of learning how to um, deal with their pain and, and teaching them a little bit about food. And just a little bit about my story. My mom actually, she suffered with chronic pain. She had this um, horrible disease called retinoiditis. And through our, um, my husband and I have been plant-based for a long time, probably 10 years. And that started more with our children and kind of helping them navigate things, some of the health conditions they had. And then tying it all together, we saw how great we felt with, on a whole food plant-based diet and then my mom and then my profession. And so it kind of all ties together. So 
That's really time. awesome. So yeah. if someone w came to you and is having chronic pain, what would be some of those first steps to kind of, you would tell them to do? Yeah, so specifically, a lot of times we talk about in this plant-based um, community about taking in foods to decrease inflammation. And so many of our um, chronic pain conditions are caused by inflammation. And so I work with people to kind of take in more omega-3s, to decrease their, their omega-6s, to, um, you know, I'm talking about different foods that have been shown scientifically to treat with pain, like cherries, pineapple. Um, Ooh, that sounds delicious. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Anything like your omega threes um, and decreasing your omega sixes because all these oils that people eat in their foods and their processed foods, even though they might be oils that seem, or at least the media talks about them being healthy, any kind of vegetable oils, they're actually high in omega sixes. And so, if you have an imbalance of omega um, sixes and threes, then a lot of times you can have more inflammation, which the inflammation leads to pain. So I work with patients to decrease the inflammation, definitely. Um, oh, that's a great idea. And there is a, a question that says, is there is that a Norwalk juicer in the background? Someone wants to know. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, my husband is a big believer in the Max Gerson um, therapy for cancer. And my husband had um, skin cancer at one point, which sounds kind of mild, you know. And then I have had breast cancer in the past. And so we bought a Norwalk juicer several years ago and, um, and definitely believe in, and like I said, we believe in the power of food as medicine and, and that includes juicing too. Oh, that's really interesting. I didn't know what it was. I was yeah. like, that. I'm a big appliance person, so I was like, ooh, what is that? <laughs> and my brain just went to that, the shape and everything, and I thought, ooh, do they have a 3D printer? <laughs> of yeah. course she did. <laughs> Cheryl's a tech person, so of course she thought well, that for well, sure. I'll tell you a funny story. I was thinking about this the other day. My, um, my husband's um, father, he's passed now. But he gave, you know, sometimes you'll, your parents will give you a little bit of money on the side, just, you know, especially yeah. in their older years. Well, he gave my husband some money and my husband went and bought that juicer and he was not happy at all that my husband <laughs> bought that juicer. <laughs> oh. I, was, I was looking at their day and was like, oh, Bill, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's awesome. No, but I can, I can understand that. That's, that's a normal part of any couple's lives too. Is somebody bought something, you're like, what did you buy? Where did you get that? Um, Speaking of buying things, I have. I was watching some of your videos and the soy milk, and I have a, the the Yo Young soy milk, and I was oh, actually making some earlier. Yeah. So oh, that's wonder, awesome. Yeah, I love because we were talking about before I came on live about menopause, and I love to take. Here's my bag of of um, soy beans. <laughs> And I love making soy milk to help with my hot flashes. So, well, and I love it too because it's delicious. But <laughs> do you save your okara and make stuff with that? No, but I'm going oh. to now because I watched your video. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, yes. and let me here. I'll I'll put this where everybody can see. I think most of my oh, let's see. I've got a, myself trapped in my tiny little square. But I found this new thing, and it's a really really tiny mesh strainer. I think it's like a 200 micron. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like thinner than a screen. Where and did you buy that? Amazon. Amazon. And so what I found, and the reason I'm even talking about this, because usually I just use a metal fine mesh strainer, and Cheryl wasn't liking the soy milk because it was too grainy for her. Mm -hmm. This makes it not grainy, but also it doubles the amount of okara that I have. Really? Yeah. And my favorite recipe that I think everyone should try with okara is I just put a little bit of salt or salt substitute, a little bit of nutritional yeast. It's on healthyslowcooking.com and a little okay. bit of vegan lactic acid. And that it's made from non-GMO sugar beets. You can get that on Amazon, but you oh, don't wow. have to have it. And yeah. it, just like that, ricotta. Because mm -hmm. you know the texture is already like yeah. ricotta. And so, and you can freeze it. So if you end up making a bunch of soy milk or you're like, 
it's a week that you've made a bunch of soy milk and you're like, I can't do anything else. But I've made nuggies. You can uh -huh. mix it in with mashed potatoes. That's actually a traditional Japanese mm -hmm. way to eat it. That's Anyone? great. I did not know that. Oh, all that I always have thrown that away. So that's just so cool. Oh. Yeah, I'm just, I'm cheap and groceries are getting more expensive. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> and so I'm like, no, we shall, we shall not throw this away. And like when it, it's just kind of fun with the nut milk pulps, you can do some stuff. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't do anything else, you can save it in the freezer and mix it in when you make a veggie burger or veggie balls or something like that. Yeah. And we well, have one thing I love about the bundle is that um, all the menopause related um, things, because <laughs> I'm going through menopause right now. And so it's great to have all these resources. I was really excited about that. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And we'll we'll get to your thing in the bundle too. Let's see, I've got um <laughs> Lydia says, I hope it's okay to ask, what are your thoughts on C B D? And you don't have to address it if you don't want to, or if that's not your expertise. Yeah. Um no, that's a great that's a great question. Um so I live in Virginia and obviously um, things are very legal in Virginia. And I do attend every year um, the Virginia Pain Society Conference. And specifically last year, we really talked about it, but what they kind of want us and this, um, the pain community to tell patients is that it really is not been studied enough. I mean, then that's the honest to God truth. It's not us just trying to, you know, push it aside. But the CBD and, um, and THC just has not been studied enough to give a medical direction for it. I mean, obviously, in the state of Virginia, you can buy it medicinally, you can buy it unmedicinally. Um, but I mean, I honestly, I use a lot of times I use the salves because I was telling you I have a broken foot. And so I know at our um, health food store, a lot of people locally will make some of the um, the CBD salve, like the the lotion, like. And I do like to use that for my foot, but for the other and for pain, um, it's just you know they're they're really doing so much research. And even in the last year, like last five years, they have been researching and researching how food and how different things like that can help people with chronic. Pain. So just hold on tight because a lot more is to come in the future. Cool. That's really interesting. It's so cool that you know, like, like you are in the middle of learning <laughs> all of that stuff. Like for me, yeah. um, THC is not legal where I am in North Carolina, but CBD is a different thing. I, I, I've used it for like I had a, a, a sprain or something mm -hmm. like yeah. that or for a little stress, but I don't. I'm, I'm willing to try things that I don't think are gonna hurt me <laughs> as far as like homeopathic remedies. You know, there's all these experiments I've done. But I, one thing I did notice just as a an once in a while, completely non-professional person is, is they went from just saying CBD lotion to CBD lotion has X amount and they'll have a okay. measurement. And I don't know what any of that means anyhow, right? The, and I don't know that everybody knows what it means either because it all depends on who, who made it and where they got their, their hemp. And so it's not regulated at all. So and that's one of the other problems. Okay. And that's really interesting. Cause I did get, um, it's this grounding body scrub and it had a little CBD in it. And I was like, I'll need that for bundle week. I'll take any kind of, <laughs> any kind of stress relief I can. I'm taking chamomile at night people. So I'm okay <laughs> with that. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> As far as like, the, again, things that aren't going to hurt me or be, you know, I'm not going to go out and experiment with a real pain medication. Like right. I, I'm kind of fun. I don't have chronic pain. So let's be clear about that too. So with not having chronic pain, I get the, the option to decide if I want ibuprofen or not. And it's a different, right. a different situation. Yeah. Um, Linda said researching Gerson therapy is what led her to a whole food plant-based lifestyle. Um. I think it that's like, too really because we saw want... the drastic things that happened to some of these patients that like had um, melanoma and that were dying from melanoma and how they were changed with the power of food. So it's amazing. That's awesome. Um, 
Okay, and Apple says, I love that Nicole has a notebook. She's in it to win it. <laughs> so you want to talk a little bit about your bundle goodies? Yes, I definitely. Let me grab, I only have one thing in the bundle and mine is very different than everybody else's. It's just a book. And um, it's an ebook, obviously, in the bundle. But it's actually a faith-based book. And it's the Christian faith. And so I wrote this a couple of years ago when my mom was passing and I really wanted to write a resource for people that are new to eating plant-based and that can kind of take it one day at a time. So it's called In the Garden, A 40-Day Journey of Hope and Healing. So anybody can read it. You don't have to have chronic pain. Um, I do recommend, you know, people that have chronic illness as a great resource, but you can, so it's, it's kind of like a devotional where you each day for 40 days, you make the decision you're going to eat plant-based and then um, it kind of walks you through a specific scripture in the Bible um, based on when the people were coming into the promised land and they looked out in the promised land and they saw these, all these amazing like trees and they saw the vine, they saw the olive tree, they saw the fig tree and all these beautiful things out there. And so each chapter is only six chapters. And so it's kind of um, looks at each one of those things. And it, it just kind of wrote itself. It's, um, I can't even <laughs> explain it unless you're there. But for each day, I, um, I do include a tip and in how you can help in the very beginning stages become plant based, you know, like from the first day cleaning out your pantries and then you know, start looking at resources, going on Instagram, going on YouTube. And then from the very last chapter, talking about some things as far as moving your body. And um, there are there is a recipe each um, at the end of the seven days, just kind of a recipe from my repertoire. I grew up in the South and I've kind of made it a mission of mine to veganize a lot of the foods that I grew up with, which I love like okra and I love um, coleslaw and I do love beans. I love all kinds of beans. I think my dad, I mean, I guess my dad kind of grew up very poor in the South and I was raised on beans. And so like the first um, recipe in there is just how to make like the best crock pot beans and, um, and just simple things, simple things from like eating a potato because people want to have simple and um, just like I learned, actually, my ta daughter taught me this about cooking just a baked potato and taking um, lemon juice and just squirting some lemon juice and a little bit of salt. And that just gives it that like unami or flavor. And uh, so good. Oh, that's uh, good. So that's that sounds like how we cook corn. So yeah. We put corn in the air fryer and you could do it in the stove or on a grill or anything yeah. you want. But when you put it in the air fryer, it cooks quick and it caramelizes. But we put a lime and we rub a lime on the corn and then put it in. Oh, so, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's real similar. Tell us about a couple of the other recipes that you did. Um, so one of the recipes that there is my um, grandmother's coleslaw recipe. I don't know if, if, I mean, I feel like it's kind of a Southern thing about coleslaw. But I add dill pickles to my coleslaw and to my cabbage. And I, a lot of times, I'll make a big batch every week. And I make my own mayonnaise. And um, and just, I eat on that, like, all week long because cabbage is one of my favorite things. And speaking of cabbage, I made from the bundle this morning, I made one of the, the it was Rachel Detroit, her quiche. Oh, oh Cheryl's been wanting to make that. I've been wanting to make that. that so much. Yeah, it's really good. I didn't have the chickpea, chickpea flour, because I thought I did, but I didn't. And I have some um, some flour from France, because we were in France last year, and I thought maybe it would be good. I think it might be better with the chickpea flour. She said it makes it like a creamier, but it's really good. It has all kinds of cabbage in it, which I love. Oh. Nice. I love cabbage too. Cheryl, I'm Cheryl, not, <laughs> grew I go up, back and forth on it. Well, her family is half Southern, half Polish. <laughs> oh, so, <okay. laughs> so she had, there was a lot of cooked cabbage and sauerkraut going on. She's, she's yeah, no, yeah. To the, no to the sauerkraut, but I finally gotten you where you eat some cabbage pretty yeah. well. Wow. But coleslaw she'll eat. Yeah. Raw cabbage you eat. Uh, yeah. I'll eat coleslaw. And, um, 
And I'm getting to where I like cooked cabbage a little bit better. I but I sauerkraut, I draw the line at that. I don't want. Oh, that. I love it. I could just eat it like all day, every meal. It's pickles um, and cabbage. What is yeah, not to like, right? right? <laughs> and see, like I also grew up because I grew up in Winston Salem, North Carolina. So I grew up super southern too. Yeah. And like canned or jarred pickled beets oh, were the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. I thought you might like them too. And so like everybody's um, like, beets taste like dirt. And I'm like, yeah, what are you do. talking <laughs> about? Beets taste like pickled deliciousness. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. Pickled okra. I love okra. Yeah. So, I do so love good. okra. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention in the bundle, I was looking at your bundle and I wanted to ask you a question. I did the, um, the balsamic vinegar class last night uh-huh and so i read a tip and well, i got all my different vinegars <gasps> oh wow <laughs> I don't have, I don't have all the fun ones at youtube and i was like oh my gosh why do i have so many vinegars <laughs> right we, as whole food plant-based people we collect them <laughs> yes. and, but i wanted to ask you a question um i read i think chef aj had mentioned this that if you buy or use a balsamic vinegar that is four percent then it, it has a little bit better flavor if you're using it for a salad. Can you speak about that or do you? I think it has to do with not being sweet and not having that grape must in it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, but like, do you want to hand me that? So she's handing me a thing of, I got mini California balsamic. So I actually went to Sacramento for something Chef AJ did and I bought a lot of balsamic. <laughs> I love it. It's so um, and I'm trying to remember if they say what their percentage is on here, but I th I know that um, at True North, this is too sugary sweet for them, so he calls it vinegar candy. I, yeah. um, oh. Dr. Goldhammer, but that is not the general consensus of the whole food plant-based community. Um, so just depending on who you kind of follow, you but. Tell this is a popular one in the house. Yeah, right? smoked hickory <laughs> balsamic. That's good yeah. on a potato. And oh, so we yeah, actually carry okay. some of this in the car. So I think it's just more of a higher acid, lower sweetener. Because, like, these are still using grapes and things, right? Mm -hmm. And some of these are fairly, they don't have added sugars, but, like, so this is strawberry blonde balsamic. It's white balsamic vinegar and strawberries. So strawberries just are going to add some of that sweetness and sugars. Right. But well, you we had, um, I, when I, I do the plant-based nutrition support group and one night we made some salad dressings together and without oil. And so that was the thing. And I read then about the low 4% using 4% or less. And so I had a hard time finding it, but, um, this is this, I guess, Stonewall kitchens. And that's I have we have that, that one. Here, let me. Here, yeah. I'm going to give yeah, you it this. Yes, four percent acidity. So that was just none of those other bottles are four percent acidity. That's why I was just curious. Well, I just noticed on these, like some of them say, like this one is ingredients is premium dark balsamic, and then this one says premium twenty five star balsamic. So yeah. and see, like I have this one's a real old um, Stonewall. This is the twenty Grand Reserve twenty five stars. I got it at, there was an Amazon store. That's the same thing, yeah. <laughs> Is it the same thing? Okay. Yeah. I'm oh, I do see where it says 4%. Yeah. I we'll find this one, this one quite delightful. I don't mm -hmm. find this to be extra acid. I find these to be very similar. And if well, you look I guess in there, this one, so this is less acidic than the other ones, because I think these are more like eight or nine. But I guess there was Chef AJ had had a, re a recipe that was her husband's favorite balsamic vine vinaigrette mm -hmm. and that's what she was talking about the acidity of the um, balsamic vinegar yeah. i'm trying to see because i have more balsamics in here but we I have think so these many are, balsamics yeah i have a ridiculous <laughs> amount of balsamics it's crazy but, yeah most i love of these that don't. i love i love spices now i'm gonna have to go looking searching for balsamic vinegars in the world and do you guys have any of those like stores there where they have like the balsamics and the olive oils and you can go and taste like the different balsamics yeah 
I'm not sure. I haven't seen one. I know I've seen them in other cities. Mm -hmm. They're but... almost always like where vacation spots are, but yeah. We've, yeah. we found yeah. one are like fancy malls. Fancy strip mall seems <laughs> yeah. to have one. We have a couple of those. <laughs> it, right? And so yeah. like a lot of them, I think these are probably the same. I think, I think I know what you're talking about and it's not what I originally was talking about. But I think like if you're looking at apple cider vinegar, white vinegar, it is a higher acidity. And mm -hmm. I do love like this. This is a really thick, delightful yeah. vinegar. And for one of my favorite things to do is like make like a soup, like a creamy butternut squash soup. Mm -hmm. And I make it creamy with cooking some rolled oats with it and then pureeing it. Oh, that and sounds great. Very yeah, it idea. gives it that mouth feel and thickens it up yeah. and everything. And then this is thick enough when you swirl it, it looks all smancy dancy. But it's really great putting that little swirl of that in there. And it changes the flavor. Mm -hmm. So I don't so know good. if I helped you, but hopefully I did. No, no, bit. that's good. So, and one of the things I've loved, I've loved about the bundle is learning all these tips from all you know, all you guys that are experts. And I've learned so much myself. It's been so fun. Yeah. It, there's so much stuff like I'm still really interested. I know everyone who's been watching all of these are so tired of hearing me do this and they're going to be like, next week, you better do that Drina Bursch <laughs> Burton's fascia class because I will not hear of it again. But oh, I'm yes, I did that. It's so good. I haven't done it yet, but I want to. That's like on the top of my list. I did there. it with and I took my boot off because my because of my foot. And then I think I kind of put a little pressure on my foot it shouldn't have uh -oh. really good. when I when I get out of my cast I will definitely um do more of it oh and and in my I have a free heartbeat group so the, I made a, a thrive cart or not a thrive cart I'm so sorry you guys she's tired it's, <laughs> I made a bundle a 2024 bundle, health bundle <laughs> thread and so you guys can talk about the things you want to do or see if there's somebody you want to buddy up with and do something like that and also down below if you click the three dots you'll see all of the information about how to get the bundle how to get in touch with Nicole and follow her and things like that for sure so tell me some of the other stuff you're interested in the bundle um, let's see. Oh, I made, you know, I guess probably my favorite resource um, this weekend has been the recipe book that we all contributed to. Oh, and have we, we have it so printed I, out. I love that. I'm going to print it because you had, yeah, a recommendation to have it printed at, um, I go with like staples and have the whole thing printed. I'm going to do yeah. that. But yes, and if you I love egg salad. So I made the egg salad. I think it was, um, Abby Cowles. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Nice. I've looked at that a few out. times. Really good. And actually, I didn't have, I love, like I said, I love pickles. I didn't have any pickles at the time. And I used like um, pepper, those little peppers in vinegar sauce. And I used that instead. But I bought some pickles today. I'm going to add some more pickles to it. So Yeah, like chickpea salad, like tuna salad in the past. I, sometimes I make jackfruit salad now or you can make it with chickpeas, but like that was just an excuse to put pickles and relish <laughs> into something. Yes. And so if you print the pages out yourself, it only costs about $5 to get it spiral bound. They put two classic covers on it and, and do all this for you. If you send it to them to print it out, sometimes it can be 25 to $30. Yeah. So I oh, suggest wow. you print it out yourself. Yeah, it. Okay. yeah. For in, in that recipe book, I had um, a zucchini soup, which I had never had a zucchini soup until my daughter is um, dates a boy who lives in the UK and his mom is an amazing cook. And so sometimes she will send me recipes and then I can veganize them. So that was a recipe. I'm not sure the story exactly. I thought it was like passed down through the family from the grandmother, but then maybe it wasn't, but it's so good. But I use um, some of the, the cream cheese, the plant-based cream cheese that has no oil. It's made from cashews. And so you use that and it almost tastes like a broccoli, like cheese soup. And it's so good. I had no idea that you could like, I mean, it takes five zucchinis when you're cooking it. I had no idea that you could make a soup that tastes like that and has all these zucchinis. It's kind of like, I mean, when you think about zucchini bread, like it doesn't taste like zucchinis at all. It's just such, oh, so good. Yeah. 
And I bet all those zucchinis made it thick and sumptuous too. Yeah, yes, exactly. Ooh, I'm going to have to try that. Yes, Kelly Wash, that's her name. That's hopefully she'll be my daughter's um, mother in law one day soon. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. She's a great cook, so she can send me recipes from now on and I'll veganize them. Does that mean you're going to be visiting her in the UK or have you already gone to visit? We did. Yeah, we went um, last June and we met his whole family. And then, um, and we spent some time in France, which I love. We went to Lyon. Have you ever been to Lyon? No, we have not been oh. to Europe and we want, we want to go to the UK so bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's great. Well, and Lyon is like the foodie capital of the world. And actually one of the chefs there, he knew that we were coming. We sent like a little um, request and he made like a whole vegan menu for us. Oh, for wow. my husband in there and that was his and Monchot P is that's the name of the the restaurant there so it was so good and that was such a nice thing because so, so many of the foods there in Lyon is like chicken and and um and duck and all these different things that are definitely not fruits and vegetables so do you remember any of the dishes that you had because I'm super curious well, one of my favorite things in the UK is their um, porridge, their oatmeal, because we, we've been talking about oatmeal a lot in the bundle. They make the porridge so good, but it, and it's not plant based. They add a lot of cream to their porridge. But um, that's um, that's great. I wouldn't say the UK does a lot of vegan things, but like in Paris, they do. <laughs> so the fun thing about Paris is a lot of times they have some of the best chefs from the world that are non-Parisian, like Indian and um, like Turkish. And so they'll come in and open up a restaurant in Paris. And a lot of times there are some amazing vegan options and some of the Parisian restaurants. Um, I'm going to Spain. My husband's actually right now in Spain. He's doing the El Camino walk for the, the 40 days. And so I'm going to meet him there. And then I was actually, I'm flying into Lisbon and then going up to Spain, but I had a resource I found on Instagram of um, all these vegan restaurants. So I'm gonna start searching for those. Oh, nice. Oh, that's awesome. Our friend, Howard Jacobson, I don't know if you know him. He was a co-author of Proteinaholic. Um, oh, he just moved to Spain, actually. Yeah. And oh, really wow. like it. So there must be vegan stuff there for yeah. sure. <laughs> So my husband's struggling finding anything. And so um, I'm sure he's cheated a few times. They walk like 20 miles a day. So oh my goodness. He has to get some, some food in. So he has to eat like the pilgrim um, foods that are there in the hostels. And so he's doing his best. He said <laughs> yesterday he was, he was walking and he was talking to me. He's like, yeah, he's like, I left my friends back. He's like, cause I'm plant-based and they're not. And he's just <laughs> walking. <to me. laughs> like, okay, bye. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And actually, Apple says I walked the Camino Francois Francis. Sorry, I'm yeah. in 2012 and it's almost 900 wow. kilometers. Wow. He's doing the um, El Camino de Norte and then he's um, going over to the, primi the primitive one that's in the middle of um, like the forest and stuff in the um, Spain. And I think there's total, it's 600 miles. I, I don't remember how many kilometers that is. 600 um, miles? Yes, they've already done 100 in just this past week. They they started last, it's been a week. So oh, wow. Yeah, crazy. it's crazy. <laughs> Were you gonna uh, go before you hurt your foot? Uh, no, we had talked about going in the future and he had this opportunity and I was like, why don't you just go? So then, um, then when we do go together, we'll feel comfortable about getting around. Because sometimes I find like when you go on vacations, especially in Europe, that probably the thing that you argue about the most as a couple is like d directions. <laughs> and would you pass the time community? And next thing you know, like you're in an argument and they're like, oh my gosh. So um, that's why I was like, now he'll be an expert and we can go together and have a great time. <laughs> I love that. And I find you don't have to be in Europe to argue with your partner about directions. No. The secret code for we're in trouble is, I think I know a shortcut. And I'm like, 
<laughs> we've never been here before. You do yeah. not know a shortcut. <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> um, Actually, they've been yeah. doing so much work to the roads and stuff around here that this week, twice I took in the same day, I got off on the wrong exit because they've oh, just wow. so much construction. And, and in my brain, I was like, okay, it's, it's the next one. And I just got off on the next one. It was actually the one after that. And I was like, oh. Oh. I've done that twice. Yeah, I'm yeah there's okay. a lot of construction in North Carolina because when we were in Asheville, I mean, so the traffic is so bad there. Yes. <laughs> It really is like my favorite thing to do uh, is to go to Asheville and stay in a hotel near downtown because like on Priceline, I've gotten some like super awesome deals to stay in some really nice places for what you would not expect. And then just to kind of walk around because downtown Asheville, I just feel like I could spend a whole week just looking in the art stores and different places like that. Restaurants. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And there's some great vegan restaurants downtown yeah, too. Yeah. Did you get yeah. to go to Plant when you were there? Yes, we went to Plant. Um, I Plant was good. I mean, obviously it was voted like the best vegan restaurant in the whole country. But there's some other ones that are even better. Rosita's Kitchen. Was kitchen. that a yes. kitchen? That's everybody's oh favorite. God. It's more like home yeah. cooking. Plant is oh, wonderful. Once a week. Yeah, Rosetta's Kitchen. And also it's it's inexpensive. Yes. And so you can get things that are more expensive, but you can literally just go there and get like rice and dal. Mm -hmm. So like when you yeah. spend a whole vacation somewhere, you don't want to eat fancy meals three times mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. That's true. Oh, yeah, I was I was telling them earlier that we did three months in Asheville, and I recommend anybody if you can ever just go immerse yourself in three months for anywhere. I mean, <laughs> and just you get to know the people and you get to know the culture, and it was so mm -hmm. much fun. And I, I wore my shirt to rep today. I love Pisgah, which is the national forest there, and it's yeah. just so beautiful. It is. It is really beautiful, and. It's just, and it's very mountainy. So even downtown, like, so one of the things that Cheryl and I like when we take a vacation is to walk a lot. Mm -hmm. So yeah. sometimes we will go to Disney and also Cheryl's parents live near Orlando. So mm -hmm. we'll be like, okay, but then it's easy to get six, eight, nine miles a day. <laughs> a day. Yeah, and, and you just don't even notice it. And you're like, oh, that was a fun yeah. vacation. So mm -hmm. We're, we're really easy. You could probably drop us anywhere. If, we, if there's a place we can walk around and look in shops, <laughs> yeah. we're good for like months. And, have... <laughs> and Asheville has that. that uh -huh. Like there's little tea shops. Did you go to Laughing Seed at all? No, I'm trying to remember if I've read about it. It's what... an old school vegetarian restaurant. That's It's really nice, but you can go there and get salads, soups. They have vegan options as well, but it's been around a long mm -hmm. time. Okay, no, there's so many. I would, yeah, I wish. I wish did I could you go to the Indian restaurant? Yes, um, we did. We, we stood in line for three and um, got <laughs> in. And, uh, it was worth it. Last time I was there, we we ended up. I was there with Dawn, mm -hmm. and we ended up being able to get in at the very end. They just happened to. I was like, "Is it too late?" And they're like, "Nah." <laughs> and I was like, thank you. And it I was love like, how they do that. It makes you feel really important, like standing in yeah. line to get into a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not snowing. I think in Asheville, it could get rough. But, and I don't know about the weather in Virginia, but it seems like it's warm for a couple of days, like in the 70s. And then like today, again, it's in the 50s again. So yeah. I'm confused. I think we have the same weather. <laughs> it's very similar. Yeah. It's cold to I could keep either one of those on a long term, but it's, it seems like I'm just constantly putting on a sweatshirt and taking off a sweatshirt. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So uh, when are you going over to Spain then? Is it soon? Yeah, so hopefully I'll have my cast off by then, but um, it'll be the first Thursday in April. So I've got a little ways. I have no idea where I'm, where he's going to be. I'm just going to go find him. So, so it should be an adventure. <laughs> And Lydia says North Carolina and Virginia must be beautiful states. They are, they are. very they are. green and lush. Lydia's we have from the Montreal. And the AT, so great. Yeah. yeah, I think that's awesome. Um, I'm going to answer Betty's. Betty Ann has a question, and you are not a real pain in the butt. 
Betty Ann. <laughs> That's how she started. I know I'm a real pain in the butt. No, you're not. But I have one more question because I'm buying the bundle right now and it says save with link. What is that? So um, I will go back and I'll put, Are you? tell me this, Betty Ann, are you saving it on your computer, iPad, or phone? And I will go back and put the links in. So Cheryl did a video where she shows you how to save things to Google Drive or OneDrive. So that, that way you can use them on all your devices. Lisa made a video about how to save it to a phone or a tablet. But basically, you end up with this um, web page and each thing it says you click and you save it. So when you save it, you're saving it to your device. Depending on what device you're using, there could be a little bit different instructions. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to find those. Do you want to... Um, well, thank you for doing that because I actually recommended that to my friend. So. Oh, to do the Google Drive? Yeah, and like to give instructions. I know even the um, one of the lives that you did with Rose, you started out talking about instructions and for people that are struggling with some of the electronic resources, and that's so great. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, it can be new to people, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it just takes some time. And I'm sorry, because I'm, I'm trying to grab these things on here. Do you, let me think of a good question for you to tell everybody about. So um, if someone, so tell us about your support group for people yeah. with chronic pain. That oh, yeah. would be a great That's way great. to start. Uh, so I'll, I'll back up and tell you a little bit about um, the organization that I represent and I guess I own it's just me <laughs> so it's called hope for pain and i started in 2010 uh, and it started out actually as a support group and here like locally and regionally and it was small and it was based out of um, our our church and i started working with people and just learning more and more because the more like when you're teaching and you're talking to people the more you're absorbing and learning and so and then I just started seeing the whole correlation about inflammation and chronic pain and and then COVID happened. And then just recently, actually this past fall, I was invited to do the plant based nutrition support group. And so for ten dollars a month, you can join the group and every night there's a different um, session of experts. And so I am the first third. I mean, I'm sorry the Monday, the third Monday of every month. So it'll be not this Monday, but next Monday. And then I meet at seven o'clock and it's all remote and it's all online and um, all the sessions are recorded. And so basically we can talk about anything we want. Usually I have kind of a little bit of a PowerPoint and I do half it's more um, instructional based on like just this past month, we talked about the, um the omega-6 and omega-3 ratio and then after that we did a lesson and we did a recipe so i took one of um oh what is the lady in our bundle that's um japanese um, oh doctor uh, not doctor chef julia yeah. we love yeah. chef julia and I made her um, miso soup, which was amazing. Yes. And so I and then I kind of tied it all together. And because actually seaweed is actually high in omega-3s. Yep. And so in using some of her yeah, recipes, um, she has a lot of seaweed in a lot of her recipes, and which can in and give you a boost in your omega-3s. And so, so we try to make it fun with the sessions. We usually talk a little bit about um, things. You're allowed to talk, ask questions. And then usually we try to do like a recipe and just to teach people. Then a lot of the people in our groups are starting out and learning. So cool. Yeah, that sounds yeah. excellent. And how do yeah. they get to this group? I'm going to let my dog out. So Cheryl's going to ask you some questions. <laughs> yeah. Tell us um, how to get there. Yeah. So it's PBNSG. Oh, is it .com or .org? <laughs> Paul would kill me because I don't know. Um, <laughs> I can look it up. Okay, Org, if it's the it's the general plant based PBNSG. I've done some classes there too. I assume it's yeah. I assume it's not org because it is a charity, and so all the money go goes back into the organization. And the organization was started by Paul Chatlin, who is amazing. Oh, I can't hear you. Hold on. 
Oh, sure, sure. Okay, I can hear you now. Okay. And so um, Paul started the organization and he actually reversed his heart disease with plants and a plant-based diet. And he started this organization to help others. And so I'm just humbled and excited to be part of it. Yeah. Cool. That's yeah. excellent. Thank Sorry, you. she had to let the dog out. So oh, you're stuck okay. with me. And one thing I wanted to mention earlier um, when you were talking about Richmond is I absolutely love Richmond oh, really? because I like all the history stuff there. Oh, and, really? Yeah. And um, I like to just kind of look at like there, there's this place on the way on 95 when you're going towards Richmond that there's like an old um, place where you can look over down to the water where yeah. the two submarines, the, the two battle during the civil war, the two like underwater vehicles fought each other. They're in the oh, end of that you, curve. You mean something I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. And so there's like, you go down this dirt road and, it, and there's parking and everything and you can see kind of remnants of like, um, like bunkers and park? things like it's kind of a park. Yeah. It's not like a fancy park. It's just uh -huh. kind of like there's a, there's a roadside sign that says this is where this happened and you can walk the trail back there and actually look oh, down cool. into the water and see where it was and everything like that. There was definitely a lot of Civil War history yeah. for the good of that, but yeah. there's a lot of it there. And it is really beautiful because Richmond's set on the river, the James River, mm -hmm. and we have like part of your ironworks and, um, and there's a, a lot of beautiful places to just- Yeah, and, like, oh, and, and there's like two big cannons on the hill there that yes. are still there. You know, it, oh, it's yeah. amazing to me how much, how much places in Virginia have preserved stuff so well. Like, yeah. it, it's amazing to me how well they've um, done that. Well, that's sure, cool. I love, history. I love history stuff. I love I to go to Williamsburg. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, when you grow up in Virginia, you're like, I'm like, oh, more history. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is, well, it is I grew a, up in Winston-Salem. So there's old Salem there, which is nothing like, you know, what's in Virginia. But it's still, I grew up around a bit of yeah. that. Yeah. So I think well, I don't notice it. This yeah, time. Old Salem's kind of like a mini Williamsburg kind of thing. So I she, know. so every time I'm like, oh, we should go to Williamsburg. She's like, yeah, maybe not. It's like, <laughs> I, know, I know it's different. It's just, and, and I always say, because we went to the Edgar Allan Poe Museum. We did go to the Edgar yeah, Allan Poe know. Museum there. Somewhere. Yeah. There's but it was, of it yeah. was Edgar Allan Poe's sister's museum more than... <laughs> Was, Edgar Allan Poe's museum, I think. Because we kind of like spooky stuff, so we thought <laughs> oh, it would be yeah, kind of yeah. fun and spooky. And though, yeah, like, I heard recently about um, um, someone had gone, attended in Virginia. It was like a whole, oh, I don't remember what it was about, but you would go and like immerse yourself in everything Edgar Allan Poe. And they were talking about how fabulous it was. And maybe, he, I think, he like someone pretended like they were him and he spoke. Oh, wow. <laughs> so good. Yeah, Virginia, they love him. <laughs> so. Um, I remember it, it was a long it was a long time ago when we went to that museum and it's probably much better now than it was then uh, but I, don't we, know. <laughs> I just looked that up okay and it says the first thing that came up was Edgar Allan Poe cocktail experience oh there it was you like go. a speakeasy yeah <laughs> but when we first walked in and I was so excited I was so, and this was years ago and I was so excited and then when we got in there in the first case that you come across in the in the stuff that you know there's that they have there and they have all the little signs and everything and then we're looking and i'm like that edgar Allan poe's sister's hairbrush edgar <laughs> Allan poe's sister's comb it was like, so weird it, it was, was like the most random it was like a fingernail clipping no it wasn't like you know it was like here's a strand of hair I, yeah, from I'm, the hair I'm, I'm not saying anything negative because they might be listening <laughs> but i was a little unimpressed but <laughs> They do love him here. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was really funny because we were expecting something else. But then, of course, as you get further into it and you yeah. get to where they have his work, you know, encased in glass and stuff. So yeah. you can just kind of look, but you can't touch kind of thing, you know. But we just thought it was funny because at first we were like, are we ever going to get to Edgar Allan Poe? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm curious. I'm going to have to go look up his sister. <laughs> Well, I'm wondering if I'm wondering if she lived there and 
and so they had access to a lot of her stuff for the museum kind uh -huh. of thing, you know, okay. so. It's yeah. kind of funny. It was so funny. I had my mic off, you guys, I'm sorry. So that's why some of you couldn't hear me. So maybe you heard me tell, tell Max, let's go potty. I don't know. I thought I had it turned off then. So if you didn't, and Max, is, and it was all a sham, y'all. It was all oh, a no. sham. He acted, he was like panicky. And then when I opened the gate, he ran back in the house. <laughs> well, my dog's been outside the whole time. I can't believe he hasn't wanted to come in. Though. I think with all the rain yesterday, you guys had rain too, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. He's happy to be outside. Yeah. Well, he's just he like... He didn't get to go on a W yesterday because of the rain. Uh, so yeah. I think he's trying you to really like push Lucas. hard for it. Come up soon. Yes. Oh, look. <laughs> but he's a mess. He just wants more cookies. That's all he yeah. wants right now. And I'm like... Jude, you're gonna like get, maybe, make yourself. Maybe sit. next year in the bundle we should have um, like a whole dog recipe. Like, oh, that would be good. Uh, that that be could good. be really fun. I think <laughs> I have three or four dog biscuit recipes on healthyslowcookie.com. That would be great. <laughs> it would be because then he has he's he's an old man now. How, thirteen. Thirteen, and he has a delicate oh, wow. stomach. But yeah. so it's like him having all these treats is not a good thing. He's yeah. had, um, so, but enough about my dog. I know he's amazing <laughs> and irritating. <laughs> and all the things. <laughs> but um, it lightens things up. It's nice. I put in the link to um, PSN. I always say it wrong. I'm going to say it wrong again. Let me, let me look at it so I can say it. Play P -B -N -S -G. S -G. Yeah. And because, yeah, and so I put that in there so people can come and follow and maybe join your group there. Is there, yeah. like, if you, if you were kind of to say, these are the people, if you have some of these things, maybe you belong in here, or what, what would be a good candidate to well, be part of the group? Anyone can be part of the group because I think you learn um, little tips no matter what. Because, I mean, all of us as we age, we're going to have, arthritis and I know this past month we talk about we talked about arthritis and so and then everybody in our lives we have people that we know that have had back pain the people that we know that have had um you know even some bad things like fibromyalgia so um you know you can be there and represent a family member so and for with the the whole group as a whole there's so many different things we've had some amazing um guests like Dr. Campbell was there, had, did a session last month. And nice. so, yeah, I never disappoint. Paul, he finds some, some great things. I'm just, just humble and excited to be involved. But <laughs> one thing, if you're looking for me and like personally, I do a lot on Instagram at hope for pain, um, is at the hope for pain. And then my website is, um, hope for pain.org. And I am, I do have a Facebook group that is, I guess it's called Hope for Pain. It used to be called In the Garden from my book, but now I think it's just called Hope for Pain. So I do try to, um, you know, share whatever's going on in my life, whether it's recipes or I do a lot of writing and I do love to write. I write a lot on sub, on sub stacks. That's probably one of the things, writing and um, cooking. Those are my two favorite things to do and hiking, but that's not happening right now. So <laughs> yeah. you have to do but what I, you can do, right? Yes, that's right. But and I've I been writing. Your, uh, I put your Instagram into the comments as well oh, so that, that people you. can see that. But and also you are more than welcome when the live is over. If you want to come into YouTube, if people have questions, you can put your links to anything in there. Feel free because you're you're more than welcome. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, thank you. And do you have anything else you want to leave us with today? Oh, um, I guess I will pour. I'm going to I'm going to show you my soy milk because I made some. Yeah, so, yeah, yes, that's awesome. Let me, let me get my cup. That is a massive juicer back there. I've but see, never doesn't it kind of it kind of looks like a from a distance? Doesn't it look like a three D printer? I don't know. It looks like it should be reprinting my organs. It looks very <laughs> fancy and large. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. But I have two cups. So I'm gonna, which one? This one is my daughter in it, and this one um is from Macedonia. So y'all chose oh, nice. 
Those are, oh, which one you're saying? Yeah, you choose a cup. Let's use a white one. Yeah, the, the white Macedonia. one. Macedonia. I have a really good friend in Macedonia. Actually, in our book, he's one of the ones that, that wrote the, um, the forward or wherever in the book when people write, you know, he actually wrote it. So he gave us this book. And so Apple this is, is saying one. she's looking at your Instagram and your dog is super cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so this is my soy maker. I'm just going to pour because um, sometimes I just pour it and I don't even sift it. Yeah. Oh, it's very simple. It's very similar, similar to the Mio, Mio mat. mat. So, Jinx. I love. Mm. I have a really good friend who is Chinese and she. Um, drinks soy milk every morning she uses that soy milk maker and she comes to work with a canister and she has hot soy milk and she drinks on it every morning so i love wow. that it's so good nice it really does help people that have hot flashes and just having the the whole like um soy bean itself it i mean i love it just kind of calms you, my does it have flash. to be hot to help with the hot flashes or do you, can no. you have it cold too? Oh, you can have it cold. Yeah. I just love it hot. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. it all the way. She likes it all the way. She <laughs> likes to froth it and I make fro foam with it. I just have one of those little handheld frothers. And I think- Oh, yeah, me too. I have that too. And homemade soy milk froths up to this very stiff, yes. delightful foam with nothing. Cause like what I, people are always asking, why doesn't this store bought almond milk foam? And why does it, it's like, yes. you just, just make it at home. Mm -hmm. When I have a cappuccino, I always do it with soy milk for that reason. Like, cause um, Starbucks actually has soy. Most people, they have oat or almond, but soy milk is the best. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, we're we're both on yep. team soy milk for sure. Definitely. And actually, especially now that she's straining it a little bit more for me. Yeah, this, I'm definitely yeah. on team soy the milk. The strainers. So if you you don't have to strain it, there's no nutritional reason to strain it, except for you can make ricotta. So <laughs> yeah. th that is a good reason for me. But like, if if your family is like, well, I don't mind the fiber, but everybody else is like, this is weird. Just get a good <laughs> strainer and and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Not Where do you buy your stuff. soybeans? Everybody asks me that whenever I make soy oh, milk. The only place I've found them, there we have a, um, a health food store. It's called Good Food Grocery, and it's in Richmond, Virginia. It's actually an amazing place. And my book is in that store. <laughs> oh. But, um, yeah. But that's the only place in Richmond that I've found soy, like dry soybeans. I know oh, wow. people talk about getting them online. But at least that's you know a place that I can get them in Asheville. I, I found them at the little, you know, the little health food store. Like when you're first going downtown, it's right there on the right when you're going. Yeah, I, they have soybeans there. So. Yeah, it, I usually get um, Laura's soybeans. They're non-GMO on Amazon for a while. I was getting an organic soybean over the pandemic that doesn't seem to be there anymore. Mm. So oh. if you can't find them where you are, yeah. I think that company went out of business or I remember looking for them too. Yeah, I don't know, but I got them for years and years and then all of a sudden I didn't see them anymore. But yeah. Laura's is a really good brand and I've been able to do all the stuff with them quite well. Like I haven't seen any bad beans from them. And some Asian markets now yeah, that's have some cool. organic stuff as well. Like just to show your audience. Like this is all that I use. I always keep this in there. That small amount. That's mm -hmm. all I use to make the, like the full container of um, soybeans milk. So it's very little and this will last me a long time. Yeah. It's really great. So I'm glad you found another soy milk aficionado. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you guys are great. Thank you. Well, and I just wanted to, um, I found the soup recipe oh, yeah. in the big book. Oh, yeah. See. And most of the credit goes to Kelly Walsh. I will give it her most of the credit because she somewhere came up with this recipe and, and it's so good. I just veganized it. And that's in the, the contributor, contributor cookbook yes. that you can only get in the bundle. Once the bundle is done, this cookbook goes away forever. Yeah. It will not come back out in any form at all. So 
Just know that. And, and just know. And that recipe is actually, um, my children are not plant-based and my youngest daughter, she loved that soup and she, you know, you got it's great to find recipes where they just don't know that it's vegan. Yeah. So. Well, you know, right. for a long time she had to, I, I eat like a small child most of the time. She's so. better now, but for a long time it was bad. Like She, she would said, hide things from I me. I don't eat exotic things like broccoli. <laughs> and cauliflower. When we first started dating, yeah. <laughs> And now yeah. she asks for collard greens and all kinds of stuff. So like she's gotten so good. Yeah. I want to say that. But for when I first was writing stuff in 2010, I would be like my picky eater, Cheryl. And everyone would say, how old is Cheryl? And I'm like, 51. <laughs> and they would be like, oh, she's not eight. <laughs> no, no. Um, and Kitty Mommy asks, have you used black soybeans to make soy milk? Might not be pretty, but there are probably more health benefits to the black ones. I have some, but I haven't used it mm -hmm. yet. Oh, no, I've never even seen them, so that's interesting. Oh. I made a recipe a long time ago. I found canned black soybeans, which you probably will never find again. Like, you know how you go yeah. into Whole Foods and you find this random cool thing and you never yeah. see it again? And I used them in like a, a noodle salad and it was kind of delightful. Oh. But I wonder good. if black milk would be good at Halloween. I wonder if it'll make black, yeah. if it'll be black at yeah, all. That's true, that's true. Someone may be opening up those soybeans today and soaking them for tomorrow. <laughs> and that someone is me. Just spoil Now you, you soak your beans or you don't soak your beans? I, I try to soak my beans and it's for a completely different reason than the rest of the world. So it can make it more digestible. So I feel that for everyone. But for me, it makes less noise in my soy milk maker oh. when they're <laughs> soaked. <laughs> That's great, because when I was finishing making, when we started talking, I'm like, oh, no, it's going to beep, and then it, it finished. But right, and so it's just, you hear the, the hard beans being batted around, because I did that, because... I, I wanted to do an experiment. I find the milk ends up tasting the same. And one is a mm -hmm. Japanese method and one is a Chinese method. And so it's mm -hmm. not like there aren't hundreds of thousands of people doing both. So I think right. they're probably okay. Um, but well, when you make it early in the morning, those beans are really loud. So that might be yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. And I would. Whenever I get a little stressed, I'm personally more noise sensitive anyhow. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, yeah. let's keep those beans soaking this week. That's a thing. That's yeah. interesting. If you were thinking about that, it's going like, and it's quiet for that, you know, those periods where it's quiet for a few minutes. And then all of a sudden it starts doing the grindy thing again. And you're yeah. like, oh, <laughs> oh, that's and just a tip for anybody who's using a soy maker and you feel like the beans or the milk tastes beany or green or some ways I've heard it described you just probably want to cook it a little bit longer you can cook it on the stove you can I when I use the soy bella milk maker that I used to have I found like it didn't cook it enough and so I would cook it in the instant pot for five minutes and then it tastes just like pretty much like store-bought only better um, hmm. so some people are like, well, I don't like it, but make sure to give it a chance and try a few things. I find, I think yours, the soy joya and the Mio mat cook it a little bit longer than some of the others. So I've never had any issues. Uh, no, I, I love the one that I have. My friend had recommended it. That's Chinese and that's the one she has. And it's great. I mean, you know, I feel like, um, hot flashes are very uncomfortable, so if I may not like a little bit of, you know, the taste, it's worth it. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. And I think the thing is, is it's so easy to fix you guys, those, those of you who have tried it. And I know some people are allergic to soy and I totally respect that too. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm deaf. I've been on team soy milk for a long time. Even mm -hmm. before I, be, before I became vegan, I was drinking unsweetened soy milk. Cause it's, oh wow, that's great. And you said that was in the eighties. That's cool. Right. And I like it, but I also was the kind of person that milk always tasted bad to me. So mm -hmm. I found out when I was, I had given some milk to someone in their coffee decades ago and they're like, this is bad. And I'm like, I've been drinking it all day and it tastes the same to me. <laughs> so that was a big hint that perhaps dairy was not my thing anyhow. And it's yeah. funny, my dad never liked the taste of milk either. Um, 
but he would drink it because he felt like he had to, right? Um, but then we were at their house last year and we had gotten some oat milk. Yeah, we had and left soy milk before and he drinks the soy milk that we leave. Yeah. But then, mm -hmm. but then, like, and he was just like, whatever, and he just drinks it. And he's like, well, it's better than real milk. But he never would go out of his way to get it. And then we left that oat milk. And he used the rest of the oat milk. And now and that's all them. they drink is oh, oat milk. Oh, that's great. So we're, we're making you headway. Can be sneaky. We're making it's okay headway. It's okay to be sneaky sometimes. <laughs> my dad is, is um, reading fiber, fiber fueled right now by Dr. B. And so he's like, oh, this is great. I'm like, no, yeah, yeah, dad. <laughs> so I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah, they don't all like, it's like parents don't like to listen to us. Kids don't like to listen to yeah. us, right? <laughs> I am right there with you. <laughs> At least my oh, husband. That's... He's he's on the same team with me. Oh, that's yeah. good. You yep. gotta have somebody in your life that you can talk to. And that's yes. why I was like, bundle week too, like is a great time to kind of get introduced to other people's communities and new faces yes. like yours. And mm -hmm. so now people have another resource to go to. Cause like, you know, of course I I want everyone who wants to buy the bundle to be able to get the bundle. But it's bigger than that. It's about the whole whole food plant-based community. It's it's about all of us kind of coming together and helping mm -hmm. each other and learning new things. So I really appreciate you coming on the show. No, oh, no, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Great, yeah. Great to spend the Sunday afternoon. Um, yeah, and I think I even have a break. I don't think my next one is <laughs> yeah. at six o'clock. And oh, so yeah, you have a great break. <laughs> Yeah. Put, your, so might, put your gear on and go outside. Yep. I need to go outside gear. so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, let's see. Diana. Diana's saying, do you only use organic soybeans? I can only find nine organic soybeans at Winco or Sprouts. Do you oh, I th the ones that I use that I buy locally are organic. So um, I've never bought them anywhere else. I would definitely try to buy organic ones because I know and, there are some, yeah, there, there are some, some, there's some bad pesticides. And I would say yes. I, I'm okay with doing non GMO a lot of the times too, because a lot of times there's traditional far, uh, transitional farmlands. So yes. they have to be non GMO for a certain amount of years before they can be certified organic. And there's a lot of paperwork yes. and stuff. We have a lot of, there was a lot of tobacco farming around me. And so a lot of those yeah. have turned into organic or non G or, or no pesticide or non GMO farming sites as well. So I've talked to a lot of those. Mm -hmm. So if you have a farmer near you that does soybeans, you can talk about that. But I found my source for organic went away, but these non GMO ones have been very good. Is there's a lot of soybeans that are grown over, you know, in this country. So you definitely need to be careful and make sure I would, mm -hmm. like I said, either get organic or non-GMO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Lydia said this was fun. Nicole is a joy. Thank yep. you. And I agree yeah. with that. Yep. You have a great community. <laughs> I was, when I watched your videos last night, I'm like, wow, you really have a, a lovely community. You're we do. Lucky. We do. We love everybody. Like, and they, they just, they give us so much joy. Like we can come on and be like, just like in the grumpiest of moods and within five minutes, everything is just lifted off of us because they, they just yeah. make us so happy. Yeah. And we've got a lot of people in the community, just the whole food plant-based community as a whole too, mm -hmm. tends to be really supportive and helpful, but thank you so much. And I hope you get to have just the very best rest of your day. And I'm going to get you. some sunshine. And those of you who are in the comments watching, go get outside for a little while. YouTube will be back and you mm -hmm. can, <laughs> can do that too. Yep. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Bye, bye everybody. We'll see, see you, you real soon. Bye-bye.